All right, hey guys, Sly here. Welcome back to a brand new video. And today, as you can see, I am playing a game called Shinobi. This game was actually released back in 1987. And if memory serves me right, Shinobi was ported to the ported to a series of consoles. I know one of them was the Master System, so it got, oh wow, a lot of things, Xbox 360, the Wii, all of that. My first exposure to this Shinobi game was Sega's Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, because I remember I got that way back. I think this was before I got my own PS3, I had to share with my brother. But, uh, this was an unlockable in Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. I believe the unlock requirements were to, uh, beat Shinobi 3, the first level of Shinobi 3, without using a single continue. And you would have unlocked that game. There were, like, other unlockable games in that, like, Space Harrier, uh, Altered Beast, the arcade version. But, uh... It's a good game. But, as you can see, there's no life bar in this game. But, uh... It's just so difficult. And... I really didn't want to do this, but I have to play this with free play, which means unlimited lives. Now, I know everyone's going to give me crap about it, but there's a really good reason why I'm doing this. The reason why... Basically, it's an arcade game, so everyone's going to be like, oh, you can continue uh, after you lose all your lives. Which is true, up until the fifth mission. See, there's five missions in total with a bunch of, like, sub-missions uh, during it. So the first uh, mission, including the boss, will have, like, three levels before you move on to the next one. And then the rest would be four. So you get sub-level 1, 2, and then a boss, and all of the rest of them will have sub-level 1, 2, 3, and the boss. But, uh, yeah, this game is hard as shit. It was so hard that for a port for the Sega Master System, they literally had to put in a life bar. Now, for that reason alone, I wanted to do the Sega Master System uh, playthrough. But, the ending, like, sucked really bad, because after you beat, like, the final boss, it'll just say, like, mission complete, and then it would just cut to a black screen that says game over. It doesn't even give you an ending or whatever. So... At least there's a infinite lives selection for it. Because, hold on, let me go into the dip switches. So I have it set on free play and easy. And you can change the enemy's bullet speed in the language. But, uh... Setting it on easy doesn't make it easy. <laughs> it just doesn't. I mean, if you set on the hardest difficulty, you might as well just put the controller down, because it's just bullshit. But yeah, this game was ported to the Amiga, the Amstrad, the CPC, the, Ar the Atari ST, Commodore 64, IBM PC, MSX, NES, PC Engine, the even the ZX Spectrum. But, uh... <sighs> So basically the story, um, why do I keep saying um? I keep realizing, like, throughout my videos, I keep saying um, it's just, 
So the plot is Joe Musashi he makes his first appearance here. He's, he has to stop a criminal organization named Zed because they're kidnapping children of his ninja clan, so he has to rescue them. I'll get into it when uh, I get into the game. <sighs> this game's going to piss me off, even though I'm having unlimited continues, unlimited lives, but it's the only way I can do it, because it's bullshit. <sighs> and I guess I'm allergic to it, because after I called it bullshit, I sneezed. Mission 1. Alright, Mission 1, Pursue the Terrorists. We're gonna fight Keno. So basically you have a magic button, an attack button, and a jump button. So it's a very simple arcade game. And to go up to those platforms, just hit up and jump at the same time. Then you'll do a mega jump. Oh yeah, and his power-up, if you rescue enough kids, he, he uses a freaking gun. He doesn't even use a shuriken, he uses a gun if he gets a power-up. So that's kind of cool. Oh yeah, by the way, those fireballs will kill you, so... Expect a lot of that cheap stuff to happen in this game. Oh yeah, and this game uh, had to be changed in ports due to copyright. And yes, that is Marilyn Monroe. And those enemies do look familiar. In fact, they look like Spider-Man. I remembered in Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, looking back, they removed the uh, Marilyn Monroe posters and the Spider-Man-like enemies. So, I'm doing good so far. I mean, I would try to do this legit, but I just don't have the patience for that shit. Especially the... crap they pull on the last area, because... it's bullshit. Anyways, we're fighting Ken O. Basically, what you're supposed to do is just shoot him in the head. But as you can see, it's kind of easier said than done. Might as well use a magic guard on him so I can get out taking damage. Get him. There we go. And that's mission, mission one done. One. Finish. Welcome to bonus stage. So we get a bonus stage here. Basically, you just mash the shoot button and then try to kill all the ninjas before they reach you. Which, easier said than done to be honest. Because they just keep coming. Oh my god, I actually did it. <laughs> My previous runs, I never managed to do it once. And I remembered in Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, I used freaking save states like crazy. But saving up lives is imperative in this, especially if you want to play this legit. Due to the fact that it's just. bullshit. Ooh. Okay. Okay, there we go. These guys with the shields and the swords will piss you off to no end. But, uh, yeah. And this is going to be the first area we're going to be introduced to the ninjas. Now with some enemies you can bounce into them. Which don't kill you, but it knocks you back. If you run into those ninjas, it's almost 9 out of 10, it's going to be an instant death. And sometimes they do this bullshit where they materialize in front of you as you're walking into them. Like, it's super annoying. And there's a lot of that, too, where you get sniped from off-screen 
by an enemy projectile. It's just asshole the game. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just... This game really wanted your money. And those blue ninjas, watch out, because they're the ones that could jump on top of you and kill you instantly. Ooh, just like that. They materialize like that. that oh, why the fuck did I jump there? <sighs> It, it gets flat out annoying, I promise. Alright. So. There we go. Ooh. He would have killed me there. If I didn't react fast enough. Alright. Kill this ninja. There you go. See how I bumped into him? I didn't die. Some enemies you can do that, but some some enemies you absolutely can't. Jesus Christ, that scared me. It was my alarm for me to wake up, but then it just went off. I don't even know why it went off like that. But anyways, just rush into that door. And, uh... Just don't worry about the enemies. Now for this area, just wait until they come up and then just kick them. Now this part right here is going to be tight. There we go. I mean, this doesn't seem hard so far. That was just me being a dumbass there. But... Basically what you have to do... Is just take your... I'm getting impatient. It's not like I'm bad at the game or anything. It's just sometimes I just rush through things. I just get too confident. I mean, I wanted to play legit, but I literally tried doing so many playthroughs off camera, and it just wouldn't... It just wouldn't happen. It was just starting to annoy the hell out of me. Anyways, this is the second boss, Black Tortoise, I believe it's called. It will send out these ninjas. Careful. Oh yeah, it shoots missiles too. <sighs> Got it. See, every ten thousand points, you get an extra life. Finish. Welcome to bonus day. But that doesn't really matter, anyways, because you get such little score at a time, it's... Yeah, I got a sound confirmation that I got an extra life, but I don't really need that since I set it on free play mode. Yeah, I... A freaking ninja escaped. Mission three. Attack the logistic base. The Mandera. Uh... I think this is the area that's seared into my mind the most, especially, I think, level Submission 3-2, if my memory serves me correct, or it might be 3-3. But, yeah, I used to get so pissed off at this area. I hate when they bunch up ranged um, enemies like that. Because you're, you're trying to take out one, but the other guy keeps blocking the bullets, so 
doesn't matter what you do. Oh, there we go. I've run into that ninja so many times, it's not even funny, dude. Oh yeah, and then they do this. They materialize a bunch of ninjas right in front of the freaking exit. But luckily, you could just run right past them and just go in. So yeah, it's 3-3 is the place I'm remembering. Explosive bullet, so if it doesn't hit him and the bullets near them, it will kill him, so that's good at least. Time to kill this Spider Man looking guy over here. Eat my bullet, ninjas. This one right here used to give me so much trouble when I was younger playing. Uh, the Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. I use save states like crazy here. And I felt bad for any person that had to beat this legit in the arcades. Like I truly do. Hmm. Sometimes I just feel compelled to get through that without using the Jitsu. Which is what I normally do. I actually managed to do that. Pull that off. Once. I was actually impressed with myself. I don't know what the red ninjas do, to be honest. There we go. That's how you do it. You have to watch out when they throw those swords, because if you kill them and they're already airborne, they will just travel in that one direction. They won't boomerang back. Which could throw you off so much. Alright, so this part will be easy, I think. Yeah. There we go. Now watch what I do. Go up here, cast your magic. Go... Go to where you're just about to touch it. Because these things are trying to bump you into the laser. And there's a fun fact in Revenge of Shinobi. There's actually supposed to be a bonus stage with this boss and you like throw baseball... baseballs at him. Plays like a chibi Joe Musashi. Yeah, I almost did it. There's actually a glitch you can do where you cast your like jitsu um, when there's like two columns left, and you can actually glitch right through them, totally bypass that area. Oh, I got that extra life. Oh yeah, I can, I can, I'm gonna do this. The boss after this part is super easy. Huh, froze for a second. So it's gonna go high, low, high, low, high, low. So it's simple. Oh, 
damn it. I have to do this wall shit again. Okay, there we go. And the Mandara boss would like have like Ultraman characters on them. Basically just adding to the copyright infringement of Revenge of Shinobi. another bonus stage. It's a bummer that they literally use an infinite lives cheat for this shit. Well, it's not really a cheat, it's one of the dip switches. But this game just leaves me no choice. Mission four. And plus, I would feel weird not to include the very first edition. Oh yeah, by the way, that boss's name is Lobster. I don't know why, but it's Lobster. Come on, throw your sword. Bang, there you go. Crazy. Yeah, it traps you in there. Like, there's literally no way to get out. It's bullshit. Alright. I literally... It can just straight up piss you off sometimes, because it almost feels like your hits don't register. The way you think they would. Plus, the boss's weak spots are so damn finicky, and you're about to see it firsthand when we fight Lobster. Nope. Get the fuck out. these skeleton enemies that throw their bones at you. And another thing, if you stand still in the spot for too long, the game just decides to spawn enemies on top or right next to you. So you can't even strategize and play skillfully. Like it doesn't matter how many times it's kicked your ass, it just wants to kick it some more. Just be an asshole while it's at it. So right here, there's gonna be a ninja, kill him. Oh yeah, watch out for those creatures, those hunchback looking things. They don't damage you, but they will nudge you off a cliff. And it's so damn annoying. Alright, there we go. And this is where they get really carried away with the hunchback enemies right here. They get way too carried away. Like that. I literally tried to kill them and they just kept hopping over my shurikens. It's just straight up bullshit. And it just did it to me again. I 
I don't know what those enemies do. I've never let them live long enough to find out. So, you know what? I'm not letting them live. Lobster is a pain in the ass because literally his hit, his, like you literally have to hit just above his samurai sword. And look how fast he moves, he corners you super quickly. It's just total bullshit. I mean, the best thing you could do if you're running low on lives is just to lose all your lives to him on purpose. You know what I mean? Because otherwise, you will literally have no... Like, no chance at Mission 5. Like, none whatsoever. That moved right through. Okay, there we go. It's Mission just bullshit. Four. Finish. Welcome to bonus day. And I already failed the bonus mission, bonus stage, whatever. Mission five. Defeat the behind the scene ninja. Why can't they just call it the mastermind ninja? Like I don't get it. Hey. But um, at this point forward, if if you run out of lives, the whole game starts again. Like it's like it's such bullshit, dude. upset thinking about the amount of times I've actually made up to this point just get killed by some bullshit oh like this isn't the hard part oh no 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 the hard part is in the next area submission 5-2 that's where it gets really really messed up and we'll talk all about it when we get up to it Usually I can get through this area without losing a single life, but of course, since I'm playing this and commentating, I'm dying a bunch. Because of course, why not? Nope, you're not throwing your bones at me. Get the drop on him. Okay, I thought I was gonna throw this thing at me. So much stress. I mean, if they didn't implement the whole run out of lives at the final area, an instant game over, I wouldn't even consider doing this, to be honest, because freaking. By the way, they have these ninjas flying all over the place. And they literally kill you in one hit. So, I, I, I died like, what, two or three times at this place? That would have been an immediate game over. And I would have, and this whole video would have been done. Just stuff I hate doing, but it's just—it's almost like they were just being assholes making this game. You know what I mean? Like no death feels justified. Oh! 
Hey, yeah, look at that. Like, I tried to jump back and that ninja was just sitting there in that crevice waiting for me. Some fucking bullshit. And I salute all the people that played this game without resorting to the free play option and the dip switches. If you've done this, well, my hat goes off to you. You are a gaming god. And I kowtow to your feet. Because, Jesus Christ, like, they went overboard with this. Didn't even touch me, but okay. See, I'm, I, I have, I run no risk of getting a game over because of that dip switch, and I'm already getting pissed. What the? F <laughs> like, I would have to do the whole game all over again at this point if it weren't. That option. And they think they're gonna add replay value to it by doing that. It's like, no, you're just gonna piss people off. You're just, you're just a douche for doing that. You know what I mean? Adding replay value is like a good and bad ending, and that's it. Then you make people want to get the good ending. Not do the whole game over again from scratch just because you can't handle the fact that people lack the skill to do so. <sighs> Alright, here we go. This is the second to last area of the whole entire game. And, they have a new enemy, this asshole. Of course they have a guy sit, they have like triple layered freaking projectiles. That's wonderful. I believe these people with the bow staff spawned down here. Oh wait, no, it's the next area, I think. <sighs> yep, here they are. Fucking assholes. There we go. Now, I do not think the last boss is that hard, just follow what I do. He'll jump. Oh, well, I just died right away. That's cool. So basically, we'll split to four, jump, wait until that electric field's gone, shoot him. By the way, the jitsu won't do shit to him. Now when he does that, just melee. Oh yeah, and those shadows do hurt you, so... It takes a while to get used to. Actually, if you manage to make it through all three of those areas without getting hit once, even though it's pretty impossible to do... Uh, should be easy to do. I mean, you can use this Jitsu to... The, I was about to say you just melee him, but sometimes he just zips right past you. It just takes a hit and just. 
stupid. Okay, there we go. I remember I used to have states, save states like crazy at this part too. Last form, it's bullshit. Oh my god, how did I manage to jump through that? everyone expect to beat this shit in the arcades? Got him. Yes, I got him. <sighs> Nakahara is discovered to be the behind the scene ninja who taught Joe Ninjutsu, I mean Ninjutsu, the ninja art of making oneself invisible, obsessed with the idea of creating the feudal area of civil wars where ninja traditionally played a very active role. Nakahara has set up a terrorist organization. The end. Basically, not the ending that I would risk my sanity over. Oh yeah, to rub it in your face even more when you do fail. At the last area, they it shows how many coins that you spent trying to get there. To say, hey, you freaking suck. But, uh... Yeah. It, and it's like, I'm no stranger to hard games. I played Revenge of Shinobi, which is pretty difficult. I played Bloodborne. I played freaking Dark Souls. I played a lot of hard games. But at least when you fail, you don't get sent back to the beginning of the game when you're up at a certain point. But anyways, that's my playthrough of Shinobi. I will see you guys in the next one. I'm out.